Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Okay, welcome to the latest video and the story of today's video newsletter. Well, I'm going to address something that's, um, that's bouncing around on, especially on LinkedIn quite a lot. Um, and it's this obsession with real time data collection. So people are wandering around with lots of software and one of the unique selling points of the software is you can collect data real time. In other words, you can sort of, I don't know, watch the telly and watch your process performing, I'm not sure. Um, but this is the biggest waste of money of all time. And I just wanted to address, I don't know, the lack of clarity of thinking what are you thinking that you need real-time data collection? So let's, let's take a look at this. We're going to look at... Real-time... Real-time waste of money, I'm going to call it. Because for me, that's exactly what it is. These systems cost a lot of money. They take a hell of a lot of time to implement. Did you really need them? Was a piece of paper and a pencil all you really needed? So let's let's go to the heart of process thinking first of all. Let's start with this. You have a process. It's there to make money. Alright, you've got outputs that you're measuring. Usually this is where your real-time um, data collection system is going to sit. And you have inputs that of course produce that result. Many more inputs than probably I can represent on this diagram. Now one of the classics is, is the OEE system. So people want to sell you a real-time OEE performance measurement. They say, oh, you'll be able to you'll be able to view this real time. Now real time, think about this. Think about this logically for a second. What is it that you're going to see real time that you can do something about? What is it? You know, you, you're not driving a car. What we tend to think with process control is that we're driving a car. And of course, what do you do when you're driving a car? Well, when you drive a car, you, you adjust it real time, don't you? Well, I'm gonna turn left, I'm gonna put the indicator, I'm gonna put the windscreen wipers on, I'm gonna put the lights on. You're doing this real time process control. Now, why is that perfectly okay in a car? Well, it's perfectly okay in a car because you can see the road up ahead. I can see that the road is turning left I turn left to meet it. I can see it's getting dark. I put the lights on to meet it. We can see the future in a car. In a process, you're constantly looking through the back window. You're looking at what just happened. Number one, it's too late. We don't, we don't, if you, if you do this to a process, you'll create absolute bloody chaos. Absolute chaos. So, Yes, you can monitor this real time, but think about it. We notice that we're losing an hour and a half because that, that's how long the setup took on the machine. And we lost an hour and a half of setup time. You've just been watching this happen real time. What do you do? You lean out of the window of your office and shout at the setter, Oi, sort yourself out, will you? There is no response you can make in real time that's going to make 
a dramatic difference to this. You're going to collect the data. You're going to collect the data over a period. You're going to notice that you tend to take two hours, three hours, hour and a half to do setup time. You're going to spot that as a, as a large uh, loss in your system. And then what are you going to do? Well, you're probably going to spend three months fixing it. There is nothing you can do real time to, to affect this. Now, once you've started putting controls in place, how do you really control your OEE? Well, what you really do is you monitor these. So, for example, if you've done your, let's say you've done your organization of your setup time, you've managed to get it down to, let's say, 20 minutes, what would you do? Well, every morning, you'd do a 5S audit. You'd do a 5S audit of the shadow boards. Are all the tools in place? What else would you do a startup check of? Do I have enough material? Do I have enough material? Because what did you do? You set, you did some organization, you did some improvements, you set a maximum, you set a minimum, you set a standard work. How often does a parts feeder come around and replenish the material? So before you start the line in the morning, you do a little check. Is my material as it should be? Yes, it is. So done a 5S audit, all my tools are in place. So my setups are going to be quickest. I've done a startup audit, all my materials in place. So I'm not going to run out. I'm not going to go rushing around looking for material and the line is on stop. What else might we do? TPM checks. Is the status of the equipment in good order? Has the operator done their checks? Has the technician done their checks? Are they all done? All of these are boring, by the way. They're audits. And by the way, they're audits that make money. Why do they make money? Because they are linked to controls that I put in place to make more money. I figured out how to make more money, then I audit it. Audits make money. They are not to win you a prize and a certificate. It's stupid to use them like that. They are waste if you use them to, to win a prize. So the audits make money. Uh, what else might I do? Um, I might check that I've got trained staff on the line. Maybe there's particular tasks that only trained personnel can do. So I have three positions where I have to have trained people. The other five positions, I just need a pair of arms and legs. Trained staff are on the line. Bang, we're all good. What else might I check? Uh, ooh, are we using the standard settings for the machine? Do a startup check. There's a program. What program am I supposed to use? We're supposed to use program three. Am I using program three? Yes, I am. That means all the standard settings, the machine is running at the right speed, the pressures are set correctly, everything is correct. I do a startup check. I do a startup check on things that I know will definitely deliver me the best OEE I can currently achieve. And that could be, by the way, it could be 60%. But I know that those controls deliver that performance. I know they're all in place. Now what can I do as a senior manager? Now I'm going to play golf. I know I'm going to hit my target for the day. I don't need real time. Real time data collection. It's stupid and the biggest waste of money of all time. Now then, there are things that you need to check real time. But this in one of them. Over here, let's think of some things that maybe you could put real-time checks in that would help everybody to make more money. So, for example, maybe the material feed here. Maybe what you're doing, you're running a high-speed line. Maybe you're packing, maybe you're packing tubes of toothpaste and somebody's got to load these, these flat boxes into the machine and then the carton erector 
turns them into a box, puts the toothpaste in there and seals the ends. Now that's a job that's got to be done every maybe 25 minutes, every 30 minutes. There's a, there's a machine, there's a machine minder wandering around the machine doing these little things, feeding things in, taking material out the way, putting fresh pallets in place, all of this kind of um, just random uh, activity that happens at different times. Now what could you do? Well on the material feed where these things are sitting in a big magazine, maybe there's a sensor that you put there. What's that going to do? Well it's going to tell this parts feeder real time that he's just hit the bottom limit and he's now got maybe two minutes before the machine stops because it needs more cartons. Now that needs to be done real time. Spend some money there. That's where the money should be spent. That kind of real time makes money. That type of real time makes money. But put them on this side of the process to keep the machine running, to help the people at the point of activity do their job better so that they don't have to juggle balls in their head. Maybe there's little sensors and lights that helps them to see that the machine is beginning to run out of something. That's what, you know, we were talking about uh, putting a maximum in. You know, you just, you have a pallet of, you have a pallet of material sitting on the line and you, you have a, maybe drawn on the wall. You've, you've drawn a, a, a color on the wall here. So as the boxes, as the boxes are getting used up here, off this pallet, the machine, the machine minder or the parts feeder or whatever it is, they see the, they see the tree. That's, that's real time. It's a, it's a real time indicator. Do they need that? Absolutely they need that. Now, does that cost any money though to paint things on the wall? No. Does it make pots of money? Yes. Please, please concentrate on the things that make money and stop this obsession with stupid things that cost a million pound and have no use to anybody. OEE doesn't need to be collected real time. You can't, you can't influence it real time. You have to, you have to beat it to death. Getting, getting above 60%, you have to be brilliant to get your OEE above 60%. You have to beat this thing to death, day after day after day, project after project after case and exercise, and the next five minutes, you cannot do anything to make this shoot up to 80%. Please save your money. Please concentrate on real money making uh, controls. Please concentrate on the inputs to the process. Then you make bucket loads of cash and be successful. And that's what we want you to do.